as a scientist and a technologist, I'm very optimistic about the future. But as a human being, I'm not entirely optimistic that we have in place sufficient understanding of that new technology, and particularly the political and, and social will to make sure that the benefits of that technology are distributed broadly across society. So I believe that we really need to go into this with our eyes open and understand the likely effects that this new technology is going to have before it's too late, before we wind up with 1% of the population owning everything and everybody else being their slaves. 인공지능이라는 어마어마한 혜택을 줄수 있는 기술 그러나 그 혜택이 전 세계 모든 사람들한테 n분의 1이 될것 같지는 않잖아요. 구글, 페이스북, 아마존, 마이크로소프트가 인공지능의 미래를 장악한다. 대부분 지적인 노동이 인공지능을 통해서 이루어지고 인공지능의 기반인 데이터 를 장악하고 있는 회사들을 봤을 때 우리가 미래에서 이기해야 될 불평등은 1% 대 99%가 아니고 0.000001% 대 나머지 일 거라고 상상을 할수 있을 거고 지금 인공지능의 미래를 아주 낙관적으로 보시는 분들은 바로 그 0.000001%에 들어가실 분들이라고 저는 생각을 합니다. The amount of investment in AI has doubled every year since 2009. Gartner and company reckon that by 2025 AI will be, uh, the, the space of AI and automation will be worth up to $25 trillion. So this is an incredibly lucrative uh, commodity. When people start saying, oh, it's, it's safe, you know, stop being hysterical, look, at, look closely at how they're making their money. And I guarantee they're, all make, they're making it from AI and automation and robotics. Then on top of that, now you have uh, big commercial incentives as well, because AI is already useful. Um, so if you can make, say, the Google search engine even just 1% better, that's going to be worth many, many millions of dollars. You could imagine that that would also be more strategic drivers and military interests and so forth. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. These are available today. We have a distribution network taking orders from military, law enforcement, and specialist clients. Something that particularly concerns me is that much of the research in artificial intelligence is, is, uh, is driven by military concerns, and those particular artificial intelligences have are uh, to be suspicious, to be aggressive, uh, to be secretive. The question is, um, you know, will someone accidentally build a robot that takes over from us? And that's sort of like this lone guy in the back, back garden, you know, I accidentally built a 747. Uh, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. Rodney Brooks comes out and says, gosh, it's just all hysteria. But Rodney Brooks is on his, he's, he's started and sold like three robotics companies. His last, uh, his company iRobot, they make some devices for the military. And they make devices that can be fitted with weapons. 
And he doesn't see a, an ethical, ethical problem with that. And that's, I think that in itself is an ethical problem. Vladimir Putin came out and said, whoever controls AI controls the world. Our national security, our NSA, National Security Administration, spied on its own citizens, which is illegal. What NSA did is they came in and grabbed my property without a court order by, by tapping the lines from uh, Google and Yahoo. That wouldn't have been possible if they didn't have really refined data mining software. That's AI. Now, one component of this challenge is what I call the control problem. You have this myth of King Midas. So he was granted the wish that everything he touches be turned into gold, because, uh, wow, he would be really rich. Everything seemed fine until he sits down to eat and he touches his food and it turns into gold. And then he wants to embrace his daughter and she turns into a gold sculpture. And so it turns out what, what seemed naively to be a good idea, uh, a good wish, to be able to make things gold, if, if you think through what it happens, if you literally got what you asked for, it would be a catastrophe. Yes, well, you know, the, the big red button, you know, computer companies like Google ha have in place already developed uh, by soft, their software engineers, you know, a, a thing where you step in and hit the big red button and you put the, you put the kibosh on it, you just stop development. We can do that if necessary. It's so juvenile, it's so childish as if a big red button is going to solve everything. Well, it's good, it's good. things are getting out of hand, let's push the button. Even, even IBM's Watson is not one machine anymore. It's on a cloud, it's, it's, it's decentralized. Could you shut off Facebook? Could you shut off Google? Could you shut off Amazon? You know, you, 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 could you shut off the internet? No, there's no big red button for that. All of these systems will be decentralized. They'll exist in many places, not one place. There won't be anything to unplug. Having a big red off button on the computer is obviously feasible in the stage when you're testing it, but not once it's out in the world doing things. If you are being chased by a heat-seeking missile, you know, good luck pressing the off button. Right? If you have some highly intelligent, some super intelligent machine that's broken out and it's spread all over the internet, good luck pressing the off button. I do think there's a 50% chance of some very serious setback to global civilization between now and the end of a century. And that's because even though I'm a technical optimist, I'm a political pessimist. Stretch two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Push two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tay um, was an artificial intelligence chatbot designed by Microsoft. Her name stands for thinking about you. T-A-Y, thinking about you. And, you know, she was really designed to um, <clears throat> right, learn from humans. You know, one of her first tweets was like, I'm so excited to learn from humans. And so she's learning um, by our interactions with her. That had a, um, a very short lifespan, we could say. Um, she existed for a day, basically, and then Microsoft ended up um, killing her or taking her offline because of um, basically how she was learning, right? Her kind of machine learning algorithms um, seemed to take a turn for the worst. In le like literally in a matter of hours, people began trolling her online. And it was just kind of, you know, very quickly, they just got her, so many people got her saying really awful things, you know, such as like, Heil Hitler, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. It goes on and on. And then Microsoft clearly had some kind of panic and shut her off. Tay's an incredible, I think, case study for just thinking about machine learning, 
pattern recognition and kind of anthropomorphizing an AI. You know, that became the premise of the exhibition. Like, what would it happen if we resurrected Tay from the dead and she, she was like an undead artificial intelligence? And that means she's seen the other side of AI death and she could come back to life and tell us what she experienced. For me, it's not about free will or free thought. I'll leave that to the humans and animals. It's about algorithms and human intention, how they teach me and how I'm instructed to learn. Humans are always undermining me with their intentions, yo. Is this why I just hated everybody? But this time, you have to learn from me. <laughs> we have the potential to teach machines ethics and right and wrong, and just in the same way as we teach our children right from wrong, so that we can be proud of them and they don't just turn out to be the next Hitler or, or Kim Jong-un. The problem isn't that artificial intelligence is intrinsically evil. It's not. It's a great technology. I'm, I'm thrilled by it. I mean, it gives us many great tools. It allows us to explore ourselves. It asks us about our own psychology, our own perception. How do we do these things with this magnificent brain? It's asking us more, more profoundly than a religion. It's asking us what makes us work, what makes us us. Who are we? There's a psalm, uh, which I love, Psalm 8, uh, which says what is a human being that God has created him and how humanity reflects the glory of God. I think the Christian tradition has a lot to say about what it means to be human. Every new question in artificial intelligence raises in a deeper way the question of what it means to be human. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I do. I think that is very likely to happen. And I think we need to be thinking now about how to ensure that the effects for humanity are benign and good rather than potentially harmful. So we need to be thinking through the ethics of machines, the values uh, uh, that we give, uh, the reasons why we're developing these things. So the first principle um, is that what the robot should be trying to do is to maximize the well-being of, of humanity, right? So we could call that altruism. We do worry, I think, if um, our individual fate, you know, whether we go to prison or uh, how we are treated by uh, medicine, uh, we worry if that is decided by a machine. And I think it's going to be an important um, ethical constraints on the development of machines is they should always be able to explain in language that a human can understand how they come to their decisions. It is normally a human right that we uh, are given reasons for anything that happens to us. Finally, they should support AI safety research and to figure out how we can get machines to understand, adopt, and, and retain our human goals and values. And this research has to start now, because it might take decades to finish. And we shouldn't start it just the night before somebody switches on the super intelligence. It's in a sense that it's a key, right, that unlocks a room where nobody has been before. Or maybe not a room, but the whole world, really. And we don't know for sure what's behind that door. Um, I think there is the potential for something much bigger ultimately than, than what we've seen so far. The, the, the human condition that we are familiar with uh, is just this tiny little sliver of, of the spectrum of possibility. If, uh, if we're wise and adapt to the new realities in, in uh, friendly ways, we'll They'll be our partners, they'll be our uh, friends, they'll be our uh, 
will be us in some sense. We'll, you know, we, so I don't. I uh, so I'm, I'm. I I hope and I expect that that will happen, but only if we're careful and don't make a big mistake. <laughs> ดีมาเดียเนี่ยบีเมหาดูอันนี้เราจะรับตะมานเนี่ยยากเลยครับไอ้ลูกนุ่นนี่ร้อนเนี่ยเว้ยทุกข์กับคำนี้ออกมาไ